Today, I'm gonna to show you a few things you might not have known about birch trees, one of the most important of northern trees, both for its medicinal uses, but also for the practical uses of the wood for us humans. Winter wonderland, oh, boys. Yeah. Everyone, today we are talking about birch trees. Birch trees in real life. Oh, wonderful. And we have the whole family up here in the mountains to, to help with this. Ah, woo! The kids play a lot of Minecraft and trees. they're always cutting down birch trees, but I wanted to show them what a birch tree looked like in real life. I should continue cutting down my other trees. It feels like Narnia up here. There's a lot of spruce and fir and there's a lot of trees that look dead, deciduous trees, and the easiest ones for me to identify are birch trees. So I thought this might be a good time to talk about that. Now, before I show you the first birch tree here, let me point out that there are many different species of birch trees, 16 in North America, and worldwide, closer to 60. They have similar traits though, so if you understand one, you could generalize a bit to the others. In fact, if you live anywhere in this range, you could probably go out and find one after this video. Our current exploration here is actually far to the south of its common range. We are here in the wintry wonderland known as Appalachia. Which is how they say it here. Oh, apparently that's how you say it. Apple at you. Like if you're throwing an apple, apple at you. You said apple at you. Oh, did I? The first fun fact I wanted to show here relates to the oil in their bark. So take this, this twig off of this birch tree and then chew it. Okay. Hope this isn't a trick. No, it's not a trick. Oh! Oh my gosh. Nature's toothbrush. You just chew it up. And it takes it tastes like a wintergreen lifesaver. It is wintergreen. Yeah, this is the tree they got the wintergreen flavor from. I believe it's winter green. Winter green? I'm serious. I think it's winter green. You can like. This mash is probably it up. where they got the idea for candy canes. Yeah, it's also the ingredient in certain toothpaste and chewing gum. I had no idea it comes from the birch tree. Let me take a second to explain this oil. Wintergreen oil right here chemically is methyl salicylate, which smells a bit like root beer or what people might say is minty. What does it taste like? You good? Smelly good, right? Well, it tastes kind of good. Right? Because it's often used in flavoring mints. Take that and like mash down on it because you want to get it to a, like a pulp and then like you can use it as a toothbrush. Yeah, uh, yeah, toothbrush. Mmm, that was great. <laughs> that I, had like? to do, I had to do that. <laughs> Many plants produce this chemical in small amounts where it can be used as a plant communicator and as a chemical to ward off predators and pathogens. Not bad. The American wintergreen plant pictured in this package produces it, but also a handful of birches like the sweet birch and the yellow birch I'm looking at right here. I had no idea it comes from the birch tree. This might be a good time to note that oil of wintergreen, aka methyl salicylate, is a methyl ester of salicylic acid, which if you know your chemicals is what cotton pads are often soaked in to exfoliate skin for acne treatment. It's also an active metabolite of acetyl salicylic acid, otherwise known as aspirin. Now I mention this because a bit of knowledge of this chemical will help you understand its traditional and medical use. And that's probably why teas from yellow and sweet birch are used for fevers and stomach aches. It's also an anti-inflammatory. But be careful. I mean, most people know you shouldn't take a lot of aspirin and it'll kill you. Well, a 10 milliliter bottle of this stuff would be roughly equivalent to 60 aspirins. And in fact, rubbing this on little babies can prove fatal in doses as small as four or five milliliters. So yeah. Yeah, they used to harvest it. What kind of birch is this? Um, I think this is a yellow birch. Do they all flake or, off like paper like birch. this? Because I always call them paper birches, but. Well, paper birch is a little more papery. So paper birches are found in this range, close to where Haley used to live in Minnesota. And paper birches have that characteristic white trunk with black spots. And that looks a little different than the yellow birch we see here. Birch trees peel off like this. Oh, there you go. There's signature birch. That's nice. That's real birchy looking. Okay. Oh, all the stuff you can peel off is really good if you're having trouble starting a fire. You can use all this little tiny stuff to uh, start the very beginning of your fire. It's really good for a little baby kindling, a little starter fuel. So as we're going through, this is one of the things that I take and shove in my pocket to keep warm and keep dry. Birch trees are really good because they have a lot of oil in their bark, which makes them easy <laughs> to 
ignite. You can't see everything here in the winter, so here's a few more things you might not know about birch trees. I felt like the natural throw here was to Scandinavia, to Jonas, who lives in Sweden, to help me explain it a little bit better. The guy who kind of came up with the idea for Minecraft uh, was Swedish. Many of the trees that you find in the game came from his home country here in Sweden. Birch is one of the more common types of trees that we have here in Sweden. We have three different species, and as you can see, they're really distinct. This white, uh, white color is very distinctive of the birch trees that we have here except for species number three, which is, to be honest, my favorite species, which is found up in the north of Sweden, up in the mountains, above the tree line. So what I think is really interesting about this alpine tundra is that you have plant species up here that are related to the big trees that we see down in our forests. It's just that they're tiny. This is actually a birch. This is Betula nana, or the dwarf birch. Up here, at about a thousand meters elevation, they don't grow much taller than, uh, than this. They just spread out like a mat on the ground. And it survives in these extremely harsh conditions up in the mountains uh, where you can get super cold winters. Uh, you have rain there up there, just harsh conditions all year round. So I wanna show you, just taking a short walk here around my forest. You can see how easy it is to see, find and see and distinguish these birch trees. They stand out like white, whitish poles everywhere. But this is a young tree right here. You got this brown color. And then as they grow older, they kind of grow into this beautiful, beautiful white color. All right, guys, that's it from me here in Sweden, the birch trees that we have here. So back to you, Rob. Birch trees in Minecraft are completely white, but with Little black, black dots. dots. I'm here with August. This guy is an expert gamer, so I have a few questions for him about Minecraft birch trees. Yeah. Yeah. The birch is the only tree in Minecraft that you can strip with your hands. Strip? Really? Yeah, take the bark off. Really? This is, the birch is the only one you can do it. Oh. All the other trees, you need an axe to do that. Birch is actually the second most famous tree in Minecraft. Besides oak. Uh, check out the video on oak trees when it comes out. I suppose this is a good time to explain that I started doing all of this because I'm a biologist and I wanted people to understand the different trees and animals and things around them in the forest, uh, particularly the forest, because people would look at trees and the greenery around them and they just see green. A lot of people I found couldn't identify individual tree species and I found that was really just a shame. You know, I don't know the best way to educate people, to show them these things. I think it's in person and going on walks with people. So these videos that I'm making are really second best. And I'm hoping what it does is just provide a resource. If you are going out into the wild and you're going to become that person who's then teaching others. Because I like to watch videos on YouTube that talk about different things in the forest. I find bushcraft is a, is a nice way to get into it. Not all of my videos are bushcraft but I find that a lot more people can find the application if the tree, like birch trees, are good for starting fires or have different other herbal remedies. So I'm gonna be starting there and then we'll get into some of the other things out in the wild. And, and not everything I'm doing is necessarily related to what Stone Age man would have done. Whoa, you put one fire out. But I find Stone Age man is just a great way to describe the channel because we evolved in the Stone Age. Getting back into the woods is a great way to connect with who we are as people. I'm just gonna get a close up of you drinking your, your cup of water, okay? Okay. That's all we're gonna do. Okay, back to some of the other things about birch trees. I'm gonna go up here to this birch tree, see if I can get some of the hoof fungus. A discussion of birch wouldn't be complete without talking about the fungus that you can find oh, on it. I got on my shoulders. I was just thinking that. So Haley got on my shoulder to find the fungus that you can use to make the famous Amadou. That's what the 5,000 year old Iceman had in his pocket. But it's really way up here on the tree. So Rob's down there. Hi. Holding me up so I can grab it. Okay, but I got one. Here you go, your I reward. I can't believe it. I yeah. got one. Every time we find a birch, we look for this fungus. In fact, last year when we were teaching our winter survival course, we found a whole bunch of them on the birch trees around there. Now, one of the reasons Iceman had it in his pocket is that it's fantastic for starting fires. Good for starting fires, right here. Now, a lot of you already know this, but I'm a biologist and a filmmaker. That's why I'm taking my camera and talking about these things in this format. Uh, hopefully you found it useful. If you did, hit that like button. 
comment below. A big thanks to my patrons who are constantly supporting the work that I'm doing. Uh, you can go over there and support too for just a dollar a month if you want. Or you can get the new book that Haley and I wrote together, Mother Nature's Not Trying to Kill You. And I sell it cheaper on Patreon. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in another video.